In this video, we're going to show you how to use the graphing sticky in classpad.net to create some holiday art. And the ideas here can be used, you know, at any, at any holiday, but obviously we're focusing on winter and Christmas holiday spirit. So I want to start off something simple where you're just using functions and really applying the understanding of domain and range and limiting those. So I'm going to pull up a graphing sticky. Um, you'll notice that the graph grid is the default. I'm going to leave that on for now, but you can go back up here in settings and turn it off once you've created your design. So I want to make, maybe make a Christmas tree. So I'm going to kind of zoom in a little bit here and I'm going to use linear functions. So I'm going to get my function tool here. I'm going to change the color. So over here is how you change the color. And I'm just going to enter a very simple linear function, x plus 4. And so you'll see that that creates that line. This is going to be part of my tree. And maybe I actually want to, I want to color in my tree. So instead of e an equal sign, I'm going to use an inequality. So let's do less than. And so watch what happens in shades and all that. So I'm getting my shading. Now I want to have a tr the top of the tree hitting here at 4. So I'm going to create a second function. Also change the color to green. And I'm going to use the same function except I'm going to make it negative. And actually, I want to use less than or equal to again to, to do my shading. But this time, I'm going to make it negative x so that it is sloping in the opposite direction. So notice now I have my nice tree shaded in. And now I want to put a bottom of the tree. So let's say I want to put a horizontal line here at, uh, let's say, negative 8. So again, get another function, make it green. And this time, I want it to just equal let's just say negative eight. And that's just gonna put this line here at negative, oh, I didn't mean negative eight, I meant negative, I think I, I meant negative four, that's what I meant. There we go, negative four. So this is my tree, right? I only want this particular section. So one thing I wanna now do is think about, well, this is showing me the entire line, so all of the shading. So I kind of want to limit what I see. And so this is where in class, but it's really easy to limit your domain and range. So I'm going to use this symbol right here, um, which is kind of a straight up and down vertical line. And now I'm going to put in some parameters for my uh, domain and my range. So my domain, if you think about it, that's my X values. I only want it to go from negative eight. So I'm looking here at this vertex, negative eight to the top of the tree. So I want negative eight as my end and I want it to be less than or equal to my x which is going to be less than or equal to and we're going to go to zero right so zero is my cutoff for my domain but I also have a range and so now I'm going to go back and put another vertical bar this is a really cool thing about classpad you can limit both domain and range on the same line and it will limit both so right now that's going to limit the x value but I also want to in limit how high my tree is so I'm going from a negative 4 y to a positive 4 so here I'm going to make my limit be negative 4 less than my y less than or equal to positive four, the top value. So watch what happens when I hit execute. It's gonna do that same function, but it's only gonna show that piece that I want. I only wanted to see the X values from negative eight to zero and the Y values from negative four to four. So I kinda wanna do the same thing for the second equation to limit it. So instead of having to retype all of that, I'm going to just copy it and I'm going to paste it and I need to put in that vertical bar there and now let's look at the y is correct that is a good range value here but this is not correct because I'm looking at this side so I'm really going from a 0 to positive 8 so I'm going to change these two values right here that's 0 and that's positive 8 and now when we hit execute I'm going to see this one change so now I have everything's almost perfect except for this line here, this y equals negative 4 is going beyond what I need. I need to have it limited from negative 8 to positive 8, so very much like this up here. So let's grab that so we don't have to retype it. So I'm just copying and pasting, 
And there it is. So let's hit F. Oh, I'm sorry. Hit execute. And whoops, I should have gone to positive eight. There we go. And now there's my tree. Okay. So functions, linear functions, inequalities actually with limited domains and ranges. So there's my tree. Now I could go ahead and turn off my um, grids. So I just see my tree and then I could figure out, you know, how could I get a tree trunk in there? What that, that's a rectangle. How am I going to what equations are going to help me get a rectangle in there? What inequalities? But this is just an idea. And now let's say I want to put some ornaments or lights on my tree. Here's where I could use this other feature of the graphing thing, which is to plot points. And I could change the color. Let's make them red. And now I could just plot a bunch of points. And it doesn't really matter what they are because once you plot them, you can move them. So let's just plot some easy ones. I'm good. I could keep going, but you could plot lots of points. So kids could really become creative. So then I can just move my points to different places and make it look like I have lights and do several points in different colors and, and really explore different ways to make this. And notice it does give the coordinates. All you have to do is double click them and they will um, disappear the coordinates so you don't see them. But basically lots of ways to create some holiday designs using what you understand about functions and domains and range, lots of things that way. So let's try another one. This time, let's use a different type of equation or inequality. Actually, it's just going to be an equation. We're going to use parametric. So that's another really nice way to get some nice curves in there. So let's pull up the graph again. And again, I'm going to leave it as it is. I will turn the graph off at the end. So let's get our function. Let's make it green again, because this time we're going to do a parametric. And if you've not done parametric on ClassPad, when you click here, you will see this little icon right here. This is a template for parametric fun function. And it pulls it up. And now I just have to enter it. And so I want to make sure I have it on both sides. So I'm going to put a negative 6.28 here. And then I'm going to enter my two parametric functions. So I have done this one a couple times before so I'm going to just type it in so I'm just doing a and you know students can have a lot of fun playing around with different parametric functions and their different coefficients to see how they can make it work and so now we're gonna do And now when I hit execute or enter on my computer, oh, I think I must have done something wrong here. 2 cosine t minus cosine 45t, yes. 2 sine t minus sine 45. I'm not quite sure why it's going so funky here. Let's check that out. Maybe because I need to make sure I use this. There, that, that was part of the problem. I should have used my templates. And that makes a difference instead of typing them in. I should have used my templates. So let's, all I'm doing now is just changing that. And let's make this be cosine again. Templates. And, oh, and I also forgot my T here. So that probably makes a difference. Right. All right, let's see. There we go. That's a little better. And I'm going to kind of zoom out. So all I'm doing is clicking on my graph and zooming out because so that it looks a little prettier. Um, so there's my wreath, right? That's a wreath. And what I want to do is add a ribbon to this, right? Like So here's where you can also now use your images. So I'm going to get an image. And I already have this done up um, on my downloads. I already downloaded a red bow that I want. 
So when, if you've never worked with images before, you find your image, it does have to be a JPEG or a ping, and you select it and you hit OK, and it will put it in at a huge size. And this is where now we're actually going to be using some uh, geometry transformations, because obviously right now it's enormous. And so now we're going to work with dilation scale factors. How can I make that much smaller where it makes sense to fit on this um, wreath, right? So let's let's think it's huge. So maybe we want to divide by a factor of five. And so you can notice that once you enter a image, you get a little template. And we're just going to work with that template to do some transformation. So I'm going to hit the divide. And let's divide by five. So I'm just basically doing a scale. And let's keep it in the right proportion. So I'm going to divide the height by the same scale factor. And it looks small now. It looks good. It looks like a good size. But now it's in the wrong place. And what happens when you insert an image, they um, insert at 0, 0. So their center is 0, 0. You can see that here. So here's where I can use some transformations. I want this ribbon, which is centered at 0, 0, to move down. So moving along the, a vertical change, a vertical shift. So that is a transformation along the Y. So I want the center to be different. And I need it to go in a negative direction. So maybe I want it. Maybe I want it to be right here. Um, let's let's. So that looks like a move of negative. Let's try negative four. So students can really just play around. And that oh, that's a little too much. So maybe we want it negative two. Not quite enough. So three. All right, so that looks good. And then another thing is I can put this in the front so that it's in front of it. And then I can also rotate it, or maybe I want to move it a little bit off to the side. So maybe I want to translate to the right a little bit. So that's a positive change. Let's make it move one to the right. And maybe now I think I want it up a little bit more. So a little less negative. And now I can maybe turn it a little. Maybe I want to turn it to go negative and see what that does. And that makes it uh, be a little different. So now let's turn off the grid and the numbers and the axes and the labels and look at it. Not not perfect because my, my uh, graphs on top of it, right? I can't turn this on the back, but it's kind of a fun little uh, approach. I could maybe move my ribbon down so that it's at the bottom or maybe it's in the middle or put a different image in the middle, a candy cane in the middle perhaps. Lots of things you can do with um, transformations in your images and then functions with your graphing. So have fun with that.